I, I believe that the role of the, of the beef feedlot is to basically put on uh, finish on those cattle and grow them to greater weights to get them ready for market. And generally speaking, uh, that involves bringing cattle in that have been accustomed to a forage-based diet, maybe just weaned or coming off of the cow, and gradually adapt them over to a high grain diet to make them more efficient and to gain more weight and to gain more rapidly. And, and the role of that feed yard then is to produce a, 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 a consistent, safe, well-marbled, so therefore I would call a high quality beef product for the consumer. The feedlot industry is, is very good at uh, recycling products that would be otherwise put into a landfill, uh, such as byproducts from the ethanol industry, uh, the cotton industry, uh, potatoes, bakery waste, and a whole host of other feedstuffs that would otherwise be underutilized. But the most important, abundant source of energy out there is cellulose. As humans, we aren't able to directly extract that energy. Well, the beef cow is the perfect model to convert the most abundant source of energy that humans can't utilize and convert it into a high quality protein. A feed yard has to be very adaptable to changing uh, from year to year, season to season, and day to day. Uh, we're actually, well, with the drought, we talked about corn silage and utilizing that as some roughage sources with the lack of roughage around and the higher price. But also, uh, depending on whether you can get you know, modified distiller's grains or dried distiller's grains or wet distiller's grains, and if the ethanol plant's producing one day, you know, they shut down for a couple weeks, you need to be flexible on whether you have those commodities. I've got this memory of being uh, in a feedlot just outside Mexico City and the cattle uh, 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 were, had some age on them when they came in and they were pretty thin. And four months later, the ones that were being sold really looked good. And they, were, they, weren't feed, they couldn't feed corn because uh, corn went to, uh, uh, to food for humans, uh, but they were feeding uh, different kinds of byproducts. And it struck me that they were making good beef for their market out of stuff that was just byproducts, okay? That's what the ruminant animal can do. Most people believe that, that cattle are fed grain their entire lives, and, and if you actually look at it, on average, less than 20 to 30% of the feed that goes into producing beef cattle is from this feed, lot, feed yard phase and, and would be an intensive phase. So the vast majority of what cattle are being fed is still a forage-based diet. I've spent most of my career looking for byproducts that would fit, but the ability to take our grass, our crop residues, etc., and make what we would believe is the best tasting and, and a very nutritious uh, 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 food stuff, and of course, uh, an important source of protein. And as, and as uh, uh, the population develops, as economies develop and their interest in eating more meat, uh, we can be a major part of that. The, the structure may change, the way that we operate may, ch may change, but we will continue to take lightweight calves produced by cows and uh, provide them with a balanced diet from feedstuffs which have little value in other places to produce high quality protein.